What's up folks? Today we're back with a horror movie tier list and I went ahead and made a horror movie trope tier list. First one we got here is Possessed Dolls. Now you gotta think Annabelle, Chucky, others, Megan, okay? There's a lot of these sort of movies flopping around there. But I'll tell you what, I don't give two fucks about these dolls. They're not scary in the slightest to me. We'll throw it in the D tier for now. It was all a dream. Holy shit. This is very, 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 very film school. Oh, I woke up, oh man, it was all just a dream. It's a cop out, it's cheap, and I don't like it one bit. We're throwing that in front of the possessed dolls. All right, up next we got the final girl. Ladies and gentlemen, this goes without saying. This is crucial, critical to the horror genre. We're throwing that right up in the S tier. All right, up next we got a controversial one. We got the found footage movie. Now I went ahead and rewatched the Blair Witch Project the other day. Let me tell you guys something, folks. Roast me in the comments if you want. Blair Witch Project, buns. More like the buns shit project, am I right? I don't get the hype. You know, like if it's the first time watching that, if it's the first time in the found footage, like subgenre, you know, maybe. I remember this dude in college, he showed me the Poughkeepsie tapes, okay? And he was under the impression, or at least was telling me he was under the impression that it was real. This is real footage. These people, the shit that went down in that movie, and that is a pretty gruesome movie from what I remember. So in that sense, it was pretty frightening, but you know, you're a simple Google search away from all that fear going down down the shitter. I'm gonna throw this guy in the seat here. The haunted house gives me the same sort of vibes as this possessed doll. It's like, it's creepy, sure. It's unsettling, okay. But at the same time, it's just, it doesn't smack. You know, I'm more scared of human beings and the human nature than I am of a little, a little ghost demon in a house going <laughs> If nobody's getting fucking mutilated and shit, it's not as scary as it could be. Cause getting mutilated would suck. Way worse than a demon going <laughs> For that reason alone, we'll put it at the top of the D tier. Now the jump scare. Movies with heavy jump scares, it, it just adds to the fun element of it. You don't take a girl on a first date to go see Hereditary or Midsummer or one of these deeply unsettling movies that, you know, it doesn't have as many. Yeah. You know, you know, you need some of those. Whoa on a first date or when you're showing somebody a movie that isn't necessarily a horror fan. Cause those jumps, that, that's just what makes the fun experience. Everyone gets a good laugh, ha 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 ha. You know, it's, it's fun. Jump scares going in the B tier because it's fun. The one last scare, you get the one little final thing. You know, don't think too much about it. Don't be like, oh my God, did they really have to do the one last scare? Did they really have to do that? Like, bro, shut the fuck up and just enjoy it. It's a fun little final moment just to send you off. We're taking that right under found footage. Now we have the mirror scare. Yes, it's a jump scare, but I've seen unique enough jump scares to still put jump scares up in that B tier. But the mirror scare is played out to all fucking hell. You see a mirror, in any shot of a horror movie, it's like you know for a fact that that's either gonna be a medicine cabinet that they open up and then they put it back and then the fucking monster's right behind them. Been there, done that. Okay, they go and they're washing their face, they fucking lean over, look back up, whoa! We've all seen it a hundred million, billion, trillion, quadrillion times. So we're gonna go bottom of D tier. Now we're, now we're getting into things here a little bit. The black character dies first. First and foremost, the narrative that the black character is always gonna die first in any slasher movie or any horror movie in general is just not necessarily the case. That being said, even if it did apply, it's pretty fucked up just in general. So on two fronts, we're looking pretty much directly at the F tier. And with that being said, there's nothing else to be said. We're gonna throw that guy right in the F tier. Sex equals death. If you're a character and you're, you're looking to get your bone on a little bit, you're gonna die. Yes, it's played out. It is. Yes, it's predictable. It is. However, when you're in the bone zone, you're not paying attention to what's going on over here, over here, over here. You're just looking right where you're looking, okay? You're, you're focused on the task at hand. The idea that if you're having sex, you're more likely to get killed by the slasher that's going around killing people, that to me makes sense. So we're gonna throw this guy right in the middle of the seats here, right in between one last scare 
and found footage. Excessive nudity slash sex. Well, you can see on here, I have the Terrifier as the little thumbnail for this one. And if you've seen Terrifier, you don't really need me to explain it too much further. Just, I'll give you one of these. I'll give you one of those. Those sort of moments in those sort of movies. Come on, bro. We don't need to do that. When it's used properly, nudity and sex in movies, I'm fine with. It almost gets to be like exploitative, where now all of a sudden it's less about like any sort of character or plot development or anything like that. And it's more just like, how can we show this actress's boobs and butts and, you know, coochies. I'm gonna throw that in the F tier. Don't like that. Not one bit. We don't really need to go into the too much detail about why the slasher is in the S tier. You can't think horror without Michael Myers, Jason, Freddy, Leatherface, you know, all of the icons are slashers and you would never have the final girl without the slasher, slasher without the final girl, back and forth, henceforth, vice versa, all the terms. They kind of go hand in hand up there at the S tier. Chef's kiss. Now the trope of let's split up. You got a few people looking for clues. Hey, let's split up so we can save time. In the defense of the let's split up trope, imagine how short a horror movie would be if nobody split up, right? It's just a big group. They walk up and there's there's Michael Myers and he just hacks them all fucking down. Movie's over. But that, that really is just a device to elongate the movie a little bit, maybe dive into different arcs of the different characters, different storylines, you know, different settings. You, you know what I'm saying? You, do you get what I'm saying? It's not like I'm fucking licking my chops when these guys split up, but I'm also not, it doesn't ruin the movie for me. Yeah, we'll throw that, we'll throw that ID. ID. Now, the tripping while escaping, again, we see this shit coming a mile away, but to me, it's realistic. The odds that you trip in that situation, to me, are relatively high. It's hard to even like rank, just because it's so like, whatever to me. We're gonna throw it right right down in the, the D tier. Last trope of the evening, we got the twist ending. The twist endings are difficult to execute in a way that really affects the audience in a meaningful way. When it's executed properly, like in Saw especially, that's my shit. That's my shit right there. So with that being said, it's gonna break into the A tier right at the end. We're finally gonna get ourselves an A tier. And folks, I think this is a pretty darn, a pretty darn good list. So, um. Yeah, I'm sure it's a pretty long video and um, I don't know how to necessarily end this. So it's just sort of gonna end.